Hello everybody, Gary Reporter again. I've got to redesign my tube so I can have the uh, have the grids grids arranged in uh, on an assembly that will slide into the uh, another part of the tube, and then inside this uh, assembly goes the uh, goes the anode slides in. I got a set screw here to hold it. So I can take this assembly out, change the grids to solid copper, do whatever I want to do. And uh, there's some st I put some stops inside this this part of the tube to st to stop the movement of this going forward. And uh, those are glued in there, and I've got to wait for that glue to dry before I can fire this up. But uh, I did fire it up the other day with a diode reverse like Bedini's got and uh, Aaron's got. And uh, what I found out was the uh, I got no no arcing at all in the spark gap. None. And uh, so one of my conclusions is that... Uh, the diode, maybe Ed Gray was right. Maybe the diode is supposed to be the anode towards the towards the uh, spark gap area. And uh, once I flipped the diode around, I got all kinds of arcing in the tube and in the rotary spark gap at 4,000 volts. So I'm kind of curious as to what's going on. And what I think is going on is Aaron's tube the grid, the inner grid is providing a path through the load to charge the cap and the arcing is occurring in two areas. Uh, when everything is just right, the, the spark gap fires arc to his inner grid to the coil to charge the cap. That's with the diode reversed Ed Gray's, Ed Gray's diode's reversed, okay? Cathode is towards the spark gap. Uh, what also happens is there's arcing at the high voltage end of the anodes also to the grid due to its closeness to that inner grid. That Those arcs also charge the... Uh, I don't think there... I know for a fact that there isn't any energy going through the reverse diodes. I mean... I've got 10,000 volt diodes in there. I even took it all the way down to a 3,000 volt diode, which I should have blown them up, but it had held it back, and uh, it was no arcing. I got no arcing at all, even up to 5,000 volts. I got no arcing with the reverse diode. And uh, so I'm going to build this tube that I just built. I've got the grids so that uh, you know that uh, they're close enough. I should be able to get an arc going on in the grids, charging the cap creating the uh, white flashing event and uh, which I also feel is that actually when a capacitor that's driving the high voltage anode when that gets uh, charged up and fires charges up the second capacitor that's attached to the coil uh, the load the motor coil the uh, as that capacitor gets up high enough and as there's an arc occurring from the, the first cap, the high voltage anode cap. That second capacitor discharges back through that arc, causing a flash to occur as the two caps try to balance their energy through the coil. And uh, here, here I've got another, I did some thinking about Tesla's hairpin circuit. And here's another tube design. Uh, low voltage anode is here, high voltage anode, arc in the middle. These grids are cut in half. The inner one and the outer one act like the two capacitors in the hairpin circuit. To the one would be to the copper pipe and uh, to the other copper pipe. And uh, the low voltage anode is tied to one of the grid halves. The high voltage anode is tied to the other. Now, my feeling is this is exactly what's going on in the hairpin circuit. One of the capacitors plates is tied to the high tied to the spark gap and the other plate is tied to the other spark gap. 
the next grids out here are the uh, other side of the cap going at, to the copper pipe in the hairpin circuit. Now I've got them simply tied over here to a load, which basically is what you're doing with the copper pipe. You tie the light bulb across it. And uh, that's another thing I've got to test. And uh, that, that should be very interesting. Ed Gray's patent talks about high frequency. And he talks about plates. And uh, it's very interesting what Ed's written. And you really have to pay close attention. Uh, high frequency is not a slow speed spark gap. It's a high frequency spark gap. And radiant energy uh, comes off of that. The, the, the deal is you have to know how to capture that with the grids or plates or whatever. And uh, that's my goal is to find out what's going on there for sure. And uh, that's it. Have a good day.